So here's a closer look at what comes with the kit. First up is the end insulator. Then of course we've got the roll of antenna wire itself. And then we've got the box that contains the ballon and all the connectors. Let's open this up and see what's in here. First up we've got several bags of hardware and connectors and little bits of wire that we're going to need to assemble the ballon. Then we've actually got a little circuit board that's going to hold the ballon once it's assembled. Some zip ties, some wire to wind the ballon, and of course the box itself. Now the box itself is pretty heavy duty and it's got some nice brass threaded inserts pressed into it. If we take a look at the cover, there's even a weather sealing gasket around the top. So the first step in building the antenna is going to be to drill some holes in this box. Now it's helpful to have a metric ruler to lay out all your measurements because all of the measurements in the instructions are in metric. You can also convert the measurements from metric to English if you want to do that. It just adds a step to the process. As I work through the video, I'll also note all of the measurements in inches and metric. So before we make any measurements or drill any holes, I want to mention that this box is almost symmetrical, but not exactly symmetrical. If you look inside the box, you can see there's a pattern of bosses and some threaded inserts in here that are different on these edges than they are on these two edges. The sides we're going to be drilling the holes into are the sides that don't have the threaded inserts inside. So in other words, this side and this side. So what I'm going to do now is set up the box in my workmate with one of the sides that doesn't have the threaded inserts in it facing up so that I can start making measurements and drilling holes. So I don't have a metric ruler on hand but I do have a digital caliper that measures in metric. So this is what I'm going to be using to make all of my measurements today. So the first hole that we need to drill is 16 millimeters in diameter or 5 8 inch in diameter and that hole is to accept the SO239 connector. So I'm going to locate that hole along the center of the box and 15 millimeters in from the open edge. So now I'll use this center punch on the center line of the hole to make a little divot so that when I drill the hole, the drill bit doesn't wander too much. So now what I'm going to do is drill an eighth inch pilot hole on the center line. So next up, I'm going to use my step bit to open the hole up to 5 8 inches. Just to make sure I don't drill too deep, I'm going to grab a piece of tape and I'm going to wrap it around the drill bit so that the 5 8 step is exposed but any of the bigger ones are covered by the tape. That way I'll know when to stop. So next up, I'm going to grab the SO239 connector and I'm going to put it upside down in the hole. And I'll line it up so its edge is parallel with the edge of the box. And then I'll use my marker to mark the four corner holes. Now I'll use my center punch to find the center of each of these holes and just make a little divot here so that my drill doesn't wander too much when I drill these holes out. So now I'll drill these holes out using a 3.5 millimeter or 964 diameter drill bit. If you have old worn out drill bits like I do, you'll want to drill at a slow speed to keep the plastic from melting and the hole from burring up. Next up, I'll use this X-Acto knife to remove any burrs from the insides of the holes. Next up, we're going to lay out the position of the hole for the counterpoise wire. So I'm going to put that one halfway between the center line of this hole and the edge of the box. So just like before, I'm going to use my center punch and put a divot right at my center line. And now we'll drill a 5 millimeter or 13 64ths hole. So next up, I'm going to flip the box over and drill a couple of holes in the bottom. So this hole is going to be for the strain relief, so I want to put that right in the middle. So just like on the other side, I already found the center line of the box in the long direction. Now we'll find the center line along the thickness of the box. So now I'm going to mark off where I want to put the second hole for the antenna connection. So just like I did on the other side, I'm going to split the difference between the edge and the center line and put it right in line with the strain relief hole in the middle of the box. So the hole for the antenna connection needs to be 5 millimeters or 13 64 inches in diameter. The hole for the strain relief needs to be 6 millimeters or 15 64ths in diameter. So I'm all done drilling holes in the box and so now I'm going to use some IPA and clean off the marks that I put on there. Now that I've got all the holes drilled in the box, it's time to start loading it up with some hardware. So first up I'll bring in the SO239 connector 
and then drop the four screws through the small holes. Before installing any of the hardware, I'm going to remove this insulation from this ring terminal. So on one of the SO239 screws, I need to put on this ring terminal. And the best place for it is this hole down here that's closest to the bottom of the box and closest to the counterpoise hole. So I'll bring in the screw, one of the flat washers, and then after having removed the insulation from the ring terminal, I'll drop that over the screw, then a star washer, and then the nut. Then what I'll do is make sure that the open end of the ring terminal is facing up towards the opening of the box, and then I'll tighten up the screw. Then I'll hold the nut with a pair of pliers and keep an eye on the ring terminal and make sure it doesn't pivot when I snug up the screw. Now I'm going to install the screw for the counterpoise in the smaller hole next to the SO239. I've got the hardware laid out in the order in which it needs to be installed. First up I'll grab the screw, then I'll drop on one of the star washers, and then this ring terminal which I've removed the insulation from, another star washer, and then I'll put this all through the hole in the box with the head of the screw facing the inside of the box. So I'm going to orient the open end of the ring terminal so it's pointing at a little bit of an angle but toward the SO239 connector and up toward the opening of the box. I'll hold that with my thumb and then tip this up so I can put the rest of the hardware on. First I'll drop on a flat washer and then a lock washer and then I'll thread on one of the nuts. I'll tighten that as much as I can with my fingers and then I'm going to bring in an 8 millimeter wrench to hold the head of the screw and then another one to tighten up the nut. And while I'm tightening this up, I'm going to keep an eye on that ring terminal and make sure it doesn't pivot. And then I'll use one of my 8mm wrenches to hold the bottom nut in place and snug up the top one with the other wrench. Then I can bring in the remaining lock washer and flat washer and then put the wing nut on. So now I'm going to install the hardware on the other side of the box. This strain relief hook is going to go in the bigger of the two holes. And this other lug, which is set up identically to the one on the top, is going to go in the smaller hole on the bottom. So once again, before installing any of the hardware, I'm going to remove this insulation from this ring terminal. Then I'll grab the screw, a star washer, the ring terminal, another star washer, and then install this in the box. This time I'm going to orient the open end of the ring terminal more or less straight up. Then I'll hold that with my thumb and I'll bring in the flat washer, a star washer, and then one of the nuts. And then bring in my 8mm wrenches and tighten it up. Then I'll bring in the other nut and thread that down. Once again I'll hold the bottom nut with one of my wrenches and tighten the top one with the other. Now I'll bring in the remaining lock washer, flat washer, and the wing nut. Now I can install the strain relief eye hook. The first thing I'll do is remove the hardware that's on there. So now I'll just drop the eye hook into the hole. And then on the back side, I'll put in the washer, the lock washer, and then the nut. And then I'll use a 10 millimeter wrench to tighten it up. So I'm gonna grab the enameled copper wire here and I'm gonna measure out 20 centimeters or seven and seven eighths inches. And then what I'm gonna do is fold it back on itself. So the total length will actually be 40 centimeters. So now what I'm gonna do is twist this together five or six times, starting from the folded end and leaving about five centimeters free on the free end. So now I'll grab the toroid and I'll slip the twisted end of the wire through until the point where the two wires come together is sort of at the edge of the toroid here. Now what I'll do is wind the twisted side twice around the toroid. So the rest of the windings on the toroid are going to be with the single wire. I'm going to make four more wraps on this side and then I'm going to cross over and do the rest of them on the other side. So I'm on the fourth single wire winding or sixth overall. I'm going to bring this one under the toroid and then through the middle. And then I'm going to go across to the opposite side of the toroid and start wrapping the opposite direction. Okay, so I've got all the windings done. Now I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to make sure that everything is sort of evenly spaced and there's no crossing of wires or anything in any of these wraps. So the next step in the build process is to take the end of the wire that was looped around and cut it right at the apex of the loop. Next what I want to do is scrape off the enamel coating of the wire up here where the two wires come together near the base of the toroid. It's important to be sure that the enamel is completely removed from this area because the wires are going to be twisted and soldered together and if there isn't a good connection here the antenna won't work. Now that I have the enamel removed 
I'm going to twist these wires together. So now while my soldering iron heats up, I'm going to add a little bit of flux to the wires to make it a little easier to solder. Now that that's cooled off, I'm just going to test this and make sure the wires are actually soldered together. And then we'll move on to the next step. So next up, I'm going to attach the toroid to the mounting plate using the supplied zip ties. I'm going to orient this so that the side of the toroid with the three wires extending is on the same side as the word HF kits on the board. Furthermore, I'm going to orient it so that the single wire is pointing in the direction of the word HF kits. So next up, I'm going to drop the ballon assembly down into the box. And I'm going to orient this so the side with the three open wires is facing the SO239 connector, and the two soldered together wires are towards the right facing the connector for the counterpoise. And furthermore, I'm going to orient this so that the two wires that are soldered together are aligned with the hardware for the counterpoise. So I'm going to bend all these wires up a little bit, and then drop this down into the box. Now I'll install the four screws to hold the board down. Now that everything's installed, it's time to start soldering some wires. So the first thing I'll do is get the wires bent and then trim the length so that they can fit in their respective ring terminals. So working on the SO239 side of the box, I'm going to take the two wires that are soldered together and I'm going to insert one into the ring terminal for the counterpoise and the other one's going to go into the ring terminal that's connected to the SO239 connector. The free wire by itself is going to go into the center pin of the SO239. After trimming the wires to length, it's going to be necessary to scrape the enamel coating off of the ends of the wires so that they can be properly soldered into the ring terminals. So before I solder the wires in place, I'm also going to install this little capacitor. One of the legs is going to go to the center pin of the SO239, and the other is going to go to the ring terminal that's tied to the mounting screw of the SO239. So while I wait for my soldering iron to heat up, I'm going to put a little flux in the ring terminals here to help get everything soldered. So here's a few close-up shots of the finished project. So the last thing to do as far as building the ballon is concerned is to put the cover on. One thing to note about the cover is that it can only go on this way or upside down. It won't fit this way. 